Welcome back to The Check-In. My name is Jared, and today I'm joined by Chris Bacher, who was recently at Bitcoin Amsterdam. And I want to talk to Chris about his three big takeaways. Now, Chris and I have kind of already talked about this offline, but I really want him to dive a little bit deeper into each one of these topics. So, Chris, first of all, how are you? How was Bitcoin Amsterdam? And if you could, let's start off and let's talk about the speakers in the booths. Sure, Jared. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm doing great, of course, as always. Bitcoin Amsterdam was a wonderful event to attend. I think one of the things that uh, is always a big highlight for these big events is speakers, the booths, like you mentioned. I personally never go to see any of the speakers. Um, I'm too busy you know, talking to other people, seeing what other people in the industry are doing. However, I do think that all these speakers bring tremendous value to the new people who come into the space who maybe do not know as much about Bitcoin or Bitcoin mining as we do. And for them, it might be a very easy way to get more involved with uh, the, the space that, we, that we're in. And maybe from there, go to the booths and actually talk to the people they've seen speaking and talk about, hey, what are you actually doing? What is your product? And that's something I think is really cool. Yeah, I think that's great. And actually, when I was in Nashville, I was waiting to get into the main event room. And because Trump was going to be speaking, that room got really locked down even two days before. Basically, the entire event, it was really a lockdown room. And Secret Service was in and around, sometimes kind of locking it down. So to get in there, you had to go on a line, go through a metal detector, and then before you got in. And I remember I was making this long line, which snaked all around one of the, uh, the, the exhibition halls. And I was listening to someone talk about ordinals. I actually got to hear this guy's entire talk on this side event uh, stage and it was amazing. And I was just like, wow, I, I learned so much around orals that I hadn't even considered. And so I do think the speakers can be a great way, like you said, for anyone who's maybe new to the space to kind of get, find their bearing, right? Understand some of the terms, understand some of the things that are going on. Speakers, booths, they all tie into the next thing I think I wanted to talk about, which was networking. How was the networking opportunities at Bitcoin Amsterdam? So one of the things I did I think they did great at Bitcoin Amsterdam was that Immediately upon the entrance, you came into like this big coffee room where there were side tables, there were chairs, there were like high standing tables. It just provided a great place to, you know, after one of the speakers, you could come there, drink a cup of coffee and maybe speak to someone you didn't know. Additionally, they also had a great app, which allowed you to beforehand already connect to potential other people that you wanted to talk to. You know, maybe they are investors that you were looking for, other miners. A great way to, to really easily make sure that you're speaking to the right people, that you're you know spending your time wisely. So it's a great combination for both uh, people who come in from like a more retail perspective, who just want to you know see and experience the industry, and also for people like you know you and I who want to do business at at the conference, and you know make sure that we meet with the people we want to meet. Yeah, I love hearing that. That's how they they kind of set it up. It's like I know. At least when you come into Bogota, where I currently am in Colombia, when you first come into the airport, you literally have to go through the shops before you go to get your bags. They force you to go through where they want you to go through. So I love that Bitcoin Amsterdam was forcing you to go through a moment of coffee and as creating the space for conversations to happen. Because like you said, for us, it comes mining when we're going to events. We all, uh, everyone on the team that goes normally has the B2B or, you know, the the clients already lined up that, that they're trying to engage with. So already having that seating is just great. You can say, yeah, I'll see you at the coffee area at 9 a.m. Let's meet there and let's chat. So that's wonderful. And I think that that sets up what you kind of talked about is the overall feel of maybe Bitcoin in Amsterdam, the atmosphere, the ambiance or the vibe. And maybe you can talk about that compared to other Bitcoin events that you've been to because you've been to Bitcoin events now across the world. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've like you said, I've been all over the world. I've been to the U.S. I've been to Asia. And I've been able to really get a good feel of, of what the Bitcoin industry is like, uh, you know, around the world. One thing that really sticks out to me is that you can really see that the Bitcoin community in Europe, I would say, is really growing. Um, Bitcoin Amsterdam started in 2022 and I've been to all three uh, of their events now. And you can really see that, you know, it's not just Dutch people or locals, but people from, from all over really fly in to make use of this opportunity to get to know more about Bitcoin. You know, what is happening in the space? What are we building? What is mining? And I think that's something that's really cool. And we can really see that the Bitcoin industry itself is just simply becoming more and more popular. It doesn't touch to, you know, something like, especially the older days, Bitcoin Miami or recently Bitcoin Nashville. But you can really see that, that community here in Europe is, is growing. 
Yeah, I love that. I've not been to a Bitcoin conference outside of the US. I've been to kind of a blockchain conference, a Web3 crypto conference in South America. I've been to a couple of them in Central and South America, but not a strict Bitcoin conference that's actually put on by the people uh, that are at, I think BTC Inc. is the back company that puts on the yep. conferences. You and I are going to be in a podcast soon coming up with Marco from Nice Hash, which speaking of conferences. And before we end this, I just want to give you a chance to maybe give you give people a preview of what that conversation is about. Sure. So the Nice Hash conference will be held in uh, early November in Slovenia. So that's, that's quite cool. Like I said, the European conference market isn't that big yet. And so for one of the oldest uh, crypto companies that exist, to create their own conference in celebration of their 10 year anniversary, I think it's a really great opportunity to, um, you know, for Eastern Euro Europe to really get into the crypto world and very specifically this time into the mining world. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, attending that conference and, you know, getting to speak with all these all these new people. Yeah. And I've just checked my calendar, as you said that, and we will be recording next week and that will be coming out on Tuesday, November 5th. So stay tuned for that as we talk about another conference and the value that it's going to be adding to the Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining community. If you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, please go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you're following us on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. And Chris, once again, thank you for taking the time to hop on today to talk about Bitcoin Amsterdam. For sure. Thanks, Jared.